Hello and welcome back everyone. So in this first episode on general dental knowledge, we will be discussing one of the most historically important combinations of local anesthetic that is the combination of procaine and propoxicane. So procaine is an ester type local anesthetic which was also the first synthetically injectable local anesthetic. It was prepared by Alfred Einhorn in 1904 to 1905. Procaine was once used as a sole local anesthetic agent for pain control in dentistry and its proprietary name Novocaine is well known throughout the world. It was used in medical as well as in dental practices until the introduction of lidocaine in the mid 1940s which is an amide type local anesthetic. But before the introduction of lidocaine, doctor used procaine as a sole local anesthetic agent and because of that there were a few problems associated with the use of plain procaine. Other than providing local anesthesia to the injected part, one of the effects of procaine was to produce vasodilation. In fact, it produced the greatest vasodilation of all currently available local anesthetic. Vasodilation means that it causes the vessels in the injected area to dilate which causes the local anesthesia to disperse quickly into the blood. Ideally, a local anesthetic should not be doing that. In fact, in an ideal world, a local anesthetic should cause vasoconstriction so that the absorption of local anesthetic can be delayed and the effects of local anesthesia can be long-lasting. Constriction of the vessels also helps to control bleeding of the surgical field by reducing the amount of blood flow to that area and hence reducing bleeding. To achieve this effect of vasoconstriction, nowadays local anesthetic have epinephrine in them. But back in the old days, procaine was used as a sole local anesthetic agent and as stated, it produced the greatest vasodilation of all local anesthetic available in the market to this day. Because of this immense amount of vasodilation produced by the agent, the effects of local anesthetic were very short-lived. Plain 2% procaine provided 15 to 30 minutes of soft tissue anesthesia and virtually no pulpal anesthesia. Along with that, vasodilation also made it very difficult for the surgical field to remain neat and clean because of the profuse bleeding produced by the vasodilation. Propoxicane was also a synthetic agent discovered by two scientists, namely Clinton and Lesowski, in 1952. This agent was never available alone because of being very toxic. In fact, the toxicity of propoxicane when compared with procaine is approximately 7 to 8 times greater and hence can never be used alone. But the scientists discovered that by combining these two agents, a very important and highly useful solution can be made that was then used across the world by dentists back in the time, even after the discovery of lidocaine. A dose of approximately 0.4% propoxicane and 2% procaine with levonorepine in the US or with norepinephrine in Canada provided approximately 40 minutes of pulpal anesthesia and 2 to 3 hours of soft tissue anesthesia. So in turn the solution provided a more rapid onset and more profound and longer lasting anesthetic effect as opposed to using procaine alone. This procaine and propoxicane combination was very useful, especially when amide local anesthetic were absolutely contradicted, such as in the cases of amide allergy, or when several amide local anesthetic failed to provide clinically adequate anesthesia to the patient. And until its recent removal from the US market in 1996, this combination of procaine and propoxicane was the only ester local anesthetic available in the dental cartridges, and hence it provided a viable alternative to the amide local anesthetics. One last thing I would like to add is that the use of norepinephrine in local anesthetic solution is no longer recommended, especially in the areas where prolonged ischemia can lead to tissue necrosis. In the oral cavity, this is most likely seen in the palate. Some article also suggests a link to the vasoconstriction of cerebral blood vessels in both young and old adults in a dose-dependent manner when norepinephrine is used. Hence now the norepinephrine in local anesthetic is replaced by epinephrine. So this was all for today in our first episode on General Dental Knowledge Series, a series in which we'll be discussing some interesting facts that are good to know for the dentist as well as by any non-dental individual. As always, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.